Hello everyone, this is Jose from microapis.io and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up Auth0 to handle authentication and authorization for your APIs. So you know what they say, friends don't let friends roll out their own user service and there's a lot of wisdom behind that sentence. I've seen it time and again in different organizations throughout my career. Companies spend way too much time and efforts building and managing their own user services. And it is not just the time that goes into building the features of those services. It is what you don't know that you have to do to secure them properly. That gets in the way of rolling out robust user services. And so Auth0 takes this pain away from you. Auth0 becomes a user service. It contains the database of your users. It handles the sign up and login process of your users and also takes care of issuing access tokens for your APIs securely. Now, Auth0 is one of many identity providers that offer the services. There are many alternatives, including Active Directory, Fusion Auth, AWS Cognito, and many others. And many of them offer free tiers that allow you to build your applications without any cost. The advantage of using these services is that you don't have to focus on building and managing your users. You can focus on your application and building up the business layer of your system. If you're a beginner developer, I highly encourage you to get acquainted with these identity providers, especially if you're working on your own projects. You know, it's like a rite of passage when you are a junior developer, just learning to build web applications and you get stuck for months setting up login and authorization with frameworks such as Django, Flask or, or Fast API. Now, these frameworks do a lot of things to help you set up user management in an easy way, but don't forget there is a lot more you have to do to deliver secure user services. And so by using an identity provider, you can take away that pain. In this video, I'm just gonna show you how to set up the account. In following videos, I'm gonna show you how to integrate your Python code with Auth0 to handle login authentication and authorization for your APIs. I'm very excited to take you on this journey and without further ado, let's get on with it. All right, so we are going to begin by logging in into our Auth0 dashboard. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new tenant. So we come here and we click on create tenant and I'm going to create a tenant called API threats test. So that's going to be the name of our tenant API threats test. It has to be unique. So you have the choice to deploy your tenant into different regions like US, UK, Japan, EU and Australia. And the name of the tenant has to be unique in that region. So you see the name of the tenant and it, it has the prefix of the region here. So it has to be unique. It's a subdomain. So it's got to be unique for that region. So pick up a name that is unique in your case. And then you have to choose the deployment environment. So you can uh, choose to deploy to development, staging and production. Now we're going to deploy to development because we are in the development stage right now. There are some constraints if you deploy to production. So in a production account, they are going to apply a lot of security measures, rate limiting and so on that are going to constrain your development and testing capabilities if you if you do that. So for now, let's deploy to development. And if you want to roll this out to production, then you create another tenant for production. So we hit create and that's provisioning and creating the tenant right now. OK, so that's the tenant created. And you, you see here, this is the name. It has the, the um, environment flag as well. And now we have a choice of having an intro if we are totally new to Auth0. If that's your case, I actually recommend you do that. In our case here, we're just going to go straight to configuring the account. So I have experience with this. So we're going to go here. And something you will see here on the top is information about the free trial you are in now. So when you create the tenant, you enter into a free uh, trial period where you will have access to some uh, paid features that you will lose within 22 days. The free version is sufficient for most development projects, especially at the start of the project. So this is more than sufficient to, to get started. I, I don't recommend you go into paid features until you have something uh, built and if you're really going to start monetizing or something. So we can go with the free plan for now. And now we're going to create an API first of all. So we're going to use Auth0 to authorize access to our APIs. So we come here to applications and we click on APIs. We're going to create, uh, you see here, there's the 
uh, user management API. So that's by default, all the tenants contain that API. So that's where we can access information about our users. For our own APIs, we're going to create identifiers for those APIs. So that's what we do here. We create this API. We're going to call it maybe orders API. Imagine we have a service that takes orders, processes them, manages payments and such. Let's say something like uh, Deliveroo, for example. So we have our orders API. We're going to give it an, an identifier. You can put anything you want here. Um, the recommendation they give here in auth zero is it has some sort of URI identifier with an HTTPS protocol and such. So we're going to do it that way. It doesn't, I don't think it really matters that much, but uh, why not? Let's do it that way. So we are going to say API threats dot com API orders. So it's going to be the orders API of API threats. Now the identifier doesn't have to be matched, uh, doesn't have to match your domain. This is a um, kind of random identifier. It can be, even if you don't own the domain, if you want to label the um, API like that, you are free to do that. Uh, but use something that makes sense to you and using your domain actually makes sense in that case. Um, the choices we have here about the type of JSON web token that is going to be issued. So whether we want all zero type of tokens with uh, all zero custom claims, or we want to have the RFC spec uh, type of token. Let's go with Auth0 because that way we can leverage some custom features of the platform. And then designing algorithm, we can choose between HS and RS-256. I highly recommend, please go with RS-256. Uh, the difference is HS is with a secret, is HMAX signature. So to validate the signature, you have to use the same secret that was used to sign it. With keys, if that is RS, with public and private keys, you only need access to the public key. So the private key stays in Auth0. It doesn't have to leave the server. And that's a lot more secure than having to share the secret around. So please go with this uh, signing algorithm. All right, so that's our API. And now we are going to configure it. So we go to settings and we have some details here. We have the ID of the API. We have the human friendly name. We have the identifier. Uh, we can configure the lifetime of the tokens. I think the defaults here are perfectly fine for now, but you can change them if that's necessary for your use case. Uh, something I want to enable here, I want to enable role-based access controls. So that is going to allow us to define roles for the API and uh, include those roles in the token. So we, we have these enabled, but then we're going to say add the permissions to the access token. So when the user logs in, if they have that role, the role will show up in the token, and that's going to allow us to validate those um, role-based access controls a lot more uh, easily. So we're going to enable that. We're going to make use of that later as well. And in terms of access settings, I want to enable offline access. So despite the name, offline access really means refresh tokens. So if you enable this, you're going to be able to obtain refresh tokens together with your access tokens. That's going to allow users of the API to refresh their access when the token expires. Right, so this is everything we save. And now we're going to go to permissions. So we are going to have this role based access control. So we're going to go to permissions. We're going to create some permissions here. So we are going to get you can do this in different ways. The suggestion here is to have very granular scopes. So read appointments, read orders, create orders. Let's go a little bit more high level here, I'm going to just create an admin permission for an admin role. And so that's going to give us access to a lot of functionality that other users wouldn't have access to. We can go granular just as well. And we can, uh, we can aggregate those granular permissions into roles, we can, um, we can consolidate them that way. But let's just go with this for now. It's just an example. So we have an admin role. And then we're going to go to applications So we're going to create an application to access the API. So application, what it means is client really. So we are going to configure client credentials to be able to access the API. This comes with a default client and it comes with a test client for the Ortis API. So whenever you create an API, you're going to have a test client that you can use for testing purposes. Uh, this is machine to machine. We're going to talk about the flows in a moment. The H client represents a different OAuth flow. So we're going to create a client now for uh, the UI, what would be the access in the API from the UI. So we click here, we're going to say, we're going to give it a name like orders UI client. So that 
that way we know this is the client we're going to use from the UI. You, you can choose different types here and roughly what they represent is a different type of OAuth flows. So native and single page applications will mostly work with the um, Pixie flow. Regular web applications are the uh, authorization code flow and machine to machine applications is the client credentials flow. If you want to learn more about these flows, I put resources in the description of the video so you can read about those flows and I'll make another video at some point to describe them in detail. But just so you know, each of these types of applications represents a different flow. So now we're going to select the regular web application. It's the one we're going to use here. I'm not going to do an SPA in this video, but I'm going to show you how we can configure access using a web server in Python. So that's going to be a regular web application, the authorization code flow. So create, and then there's a lot of boilerplate code that is already done by Auth0. So if you don't want to spend time configuring your service and such, you can use that boilerplate code from here. But I'm going to show you how to do things um, from scratch because it's not that difficult and it gives you a lot of control over the process. So that is our application. Now we have to go to settings and do some configuration. So we have the human friendly name, the domain where we're going to obtain the credentials, the tokens and the codes and such. The ID of the application, we have a secret. We can put some description if we want to. You can put your logo here. So when the user logs in through the application, if it is a like this one um, for a UI, uh, the user is going to be redirected to um, OAuth page and you can show your logo there instead of the uh, OAuth logo. The application type, we already explained that. We're gonna keep it as a regular web application. And we have uh, URIs now. So. The only ones we're going to need to configure here for these startup projects are the callback URLs. So we're going to have HTTP localhost docs and HTTP localhost token. So if you're going to have a server that runs on a different port, like for example, Flask runs on 5000, some of the servers run on 8080. So choose the right port for your web development server locally. And of course, when it is production, you will put the production URL uh, and choose the right path. So in our case, we're going to redirect first to the documentation page, which shows the Swagger UI of the API. And I'm going to show you a nice trick to make the flow a lot easier for users of the API by redirecting to a token endpoint. But you're going to see how that works later. You can configure the login URI, which is going to be in special cases like they say here. Um, and that's going to have to be an HTTPS URL. We don't have it now for these tests, so we're going to we're not going to configure that. And we, you can configure your logout URLs. So the tokens expire at some point, like you saw before, the token has a lifetime, but you can do more to log out your users, especially from the Auth0 endpoint. So when we're logging with the application, we're going to be, like I said, we are going to be redirected to, to an Auth0 UI where we log in with our credentials and then we are redirected back to our page and we can uh, obtain the token. That Auth0 UI caches our credentials for a while. So it's convenient for the user if we don't have to enter those credentials all the time. But if you want, users may uh, be able to log out completely from their session in that UI and you will configure a URL here to enable that. Uh, we're not going to do that in this tutorial because we're going to just stick to the tokens. But I'll do another video showing how you completely log out a user. Um, we don't need to configure anything else here. And the rest of, of the configuration is not necessary, really. We're going to enable refresh token rotation. So that's a best practice in, in JSON Web Token uh, specification, actually. You don't reuse uh, refresh tokens. You issue a new one every time. So we click here now to save the changes. And now we're going to create another application, a machine to machine application. So we have the test application here that comes by default. We're going to create a proper machine to machine application for our purposes. So we're going to call it orders API machine to machine client. 
And so this is going to be a machine to machine type of application. So this is something we would use, especially in a context of microservices. So if we want a service to talk to another, another service, there is the client credentials flow, which doesn't require going through our not zero UI and putting your credentials as a human and so on and so forth. You just send your credentials directly to all zero and you get the token right back. So we're going to use that flow in this case. We need to select the API, which is going to be the Autos API, and we're going to give it access to the admin, to the admin role. So we authorize, and that is our machine to machine client. Now, what we are going to do also is we're going to uh, use the management roles. We're going to create a role. So we're going to call it admin and admin role. We hit create, and we're going to give it permissions to the or this API admin role. And so imagine if we had a bunch of different APIs and all of them have their own admin access, we can consolidate all of those different admin accesses into a single role that defines the super uh, user admin uh, role of the application, of the entire application with admin access to all different APIs. And so that, that's a nice way to aggregate all of those permissions into a single place. Okay, that's the all the configuration we need here. Our auth account is ready for use and in following videos, I'm going to show you how to integrate all of these with Python code so that you can manage authorization and authentication to your APIs using auth All right, so that was everything. If you like this video, please like, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, make a comment. Um, if you're interested in learning about other topics related to fast API, Python or APIs or web development, please uh, leave your suggestions in the comments. Share this video with anyone who might benefit from it, your colleagues, your friends or family. And if you want to learn more about uh, API and web development in general or working with Python or API security, check out my website, learn.microapis.io. I'm currently working on a whole series of courses about API and web development. I'm going to be uploading them very soon. And so if you want to learn more about these topics, check out the page. And if you have suggestions or you wish me to create courses on a specific topics, leave your suggestions in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much and see you soon.